Hi everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to put some paint on this grey hunk of plastic. If you haven't seen the previous two videos in this series where I build this Fokker D7, you should check them out. I'll put a link in the description. You'll also witness me go through a tragic painting accident and also my attempt at fixing it. And I still don't know what exactly happened or what caused it. So it's safe to say that I didn't learn from this experience. Yeah! Let's start off by spraying everything with Oxide Brown Primer from Ammo. It will help us unify all of the parts on the plastic, reveal any imperfections or dust or dirt trapped on the surface of the plastic, and also make the paint stick better to the surface. This is an acrylic based primer which means it doesn't smell nearly as bad as some of the lacquer primers out there, and also it's a lot easier to clean. Then I started painting the upper wing in Tamiya flat white because that upper wing will be in white and red stripes. And also when doing a multicolored camouflage, it's a lot better to start off with the lightest tones and then move on to the more darker ones. Hence, this is why I'm painting it white and then red. It will make the red just pop a little more than if it was painted over dull brown surface. Then I started the so-called marbling technique on the fuselage, which is basically just a fancy name of drawing light colored squiggles on a dark base coat. This serves as a sort of color modulation because when thin layers of the actual proper color are then sprayed over this, the dark and white underlaying uh, layers of paint will provide some contrast and rudimentary shading uh, in the random matter on the final paint job. I also painted the rudder white entirely because that's just going to be its final color. Then I masked it off as well as the white stripes on the top wing and prepared everything for the red. I sprayed the top wing with Tamiya flat red. It's always better to spray multiple thin coats than to go over the whole thing once with a thick coat. That way you'll get a much smoother result in the end and you also won't risk flooding any fine details on the surface. As if there are any fine details on the surface of this model. The same goes for the fuselage. I spray the paint in very thin layers and slowly build up the effect. This is where the mottling starts taking effect because we're spraying very thin layers on top of it and that way we can build up the effect and how much the underlying contrast is actually visible. Because obviously the thicker the paint layer, the harder it will be to see the mottling. So then, believe it or not, this actually backfired on me because as you could see, the paint on these two parts turned out to look vastly different. It was too light on the wing and it was too dark on the fuselage. I think this happened because I had a lot more white on the wing than I had on the fuselage, which meant that that underlying base coat was a lot lighter than it was on the fuselage. So my solution was I mixed in a little red brown, with the red and I sprayed a very thin layer over the wing and then I did the same thing for the fuselage except I mixed some flat white with the red. This brought the two shades pretty close to each other and so then after that I sprayed a very diluted coat of the original color over everything to sort of unify them together again. And after that was dry I took some flat black masked off the red parts, and painted the engine cowling. The last parts I needed to airbrush were the wheels, so I masked off the red part with the pre-cut masks that the kit came with, and then I sprayed the tires with Tamiya Dark Grey. Yes, I prefer painting tires in a dark grey over a black. I think the result is 
a bit more interesting and more realistic like that than just having them pure black. And after I took off all the masking tape, this happened. What? What the f Yeah, a modeler's worst nightmare. As you could see, the masking tape pulled off a few huge chunks of paint right off, stripped it right to the plastic. As you could see, I did try respraying it, but the initial paint layer was too thick and it wouldn't work. I've been using the same paint and masking tape for ages now, and I legitimately have no idea how this could have happened. And so, after letting out an unholy amount of profanity, I came up with a solution. Because the red was painted over a 4 color lozenge camo, I could try and pass away that flaked off paint as some sort of chipping, which meant painting the lozenge camo by hand. This was actually not terribly difficult. I simply referred to the other painting diagram for a rough positioning of where the rhombuses should be and what colors are beside which. And before everybody starts criticizing me for this, that it's not realistic, yeah, I know. I just, I, I really didn't want to strip all the pain away. Like, I really didn't. Plus, I think the result turned out to be pretty cool. It emphasizes the fact that this plane was repainted. I mean, yeah, fabric doesn't chip this way, if it chips at all. But look, it's, it's not all bad, it's, it looks kinda cool. And so after that dumpster fire was over, I coated everything with a couple layers of a clear varnish to prepare the parts for decals. And I used these magic liquids from Mr. Hobby to help the decals set in place better. Those consisted of a bunch of crosses and other insignia or inscriptions. This white stripe on the tail was particularly thick for some reason, so it required a lot of mark softer to get it properly sitting in place. Then after all of that was done, it was time to move on to the lozenge decals. Those can be pretty intimidating at first because they're big and they have to go in a very specific position. They're also quite finicky and can easily tear if you don't handle them correctly. But one cool trick to get them easily sitting where you want them is to always keep the surface wet. That way you can manipulate them for a longer amount of time before they actually start setting onto the plastic. And then only when they're in the correct position can we start applying the decal solutions to set them in place. Then I had to apply the rib stripe decals on top of the lozenge ones. This was probably the most tedious part of the decaling process because there's like 30 of them and you're just putting stripes onto the already applied decals. And the last parts were the German crosses we had to put on top of the other decals. Then I removed the masking tape off of the engine because we don't need a mask kit anymore, there's no more color being sprayed. And I covered everything with a few coats of clear varnish to seal the decals and prepare the surface for washes and oils, which will be coming next episode. And that will conclude the video for today. So what do you guys think? I don't know, I think it's looking pretty good so far. Uh, some of the wing surfaces are looking kind of bland, but don't worry. We will fix that all with some oil paints and washes in the next episode. If you enjoyed this video, then give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. But comment down below why you didn't like it, so maybe I could improve on that. Also consider subscribing if you want to see me finish this Fokker D7, which we're nearing close to the finish line. So. That's it for today, my friends. I will see you all next time. Peace.